Welcome, Welcome to, to your morning, morning cup with, with iBen's Ben's Academy. Academy. We're Cash. I'm Ash. And I'm Kara. So we make cash. Cash. <laughs> we make cash. We make cash. <laughs> we got all that dough rolling in. That's right. It's <laughs> <laughs> funny. Yes. So today. Today. We are going to. today. Today's. There's only now, actually. Yes. <laughs> today is now. We are now. We are now. Whoa. Wow, we can't oh, we can't say things like that and do a podcast. <laughs> it's like whoa, whoa. Boom. awareness the, shifted. The matrix just wobbled yes. a little bit. We are now. We just are say now. it. Okay, let's try that. Oh yeah, we, we are, are now. now. We are here now. We are. We are now. Yeah. Fun fact: time yes. doesn't exist. Okay, so if we start to fade away at some point in the conversation, ends. You all know. Everybody why. knows why. <laughs> This is just what we do. Yes. Mystics. Expansion expanded awareness. awareness. <laughs> <laughs> oh my uh, gosh. Too funny. Good times. <laughs> oh, it was the other day we were at the Shaman Shack and um, this happens often, but if you aren't around cash often, you don't see it. Mm-hmm. But I think it was maybe Ilya, our buddy at the Shaman Shack, is like... Did you two plan this? Did you two plan to be coordinated and matching in your clothing? <laughs> we were wearing pretty much the exact it was like same outfit. The exact same outfit. Yeah, yeah. With, and it, yeah. it just it it happens. We yeah. can't help it. And the funny thing is, I was wearing that outfit to start my day, and I was doing things around the house. And then I was gonna change going to the shaman shack, but then I was like, no, I'm not gonna change. Whatever niggle, mm-hmm. for some reason, I'm not going to change. Yep. And then we show up matching. Exactly. Like, identical. Yeah. It was <laughs> like black unplanned. leggings, matching socks, and then like a... Uh, like a, it was like a, tr- a teal or teal turquoise, turquoise shirt. Teal turquoise shirt, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shocker. Yeah, this is kind of what happens when you're a wee. Mm-hmm. <laughs> kind of. Your energy fields kind of blend <laughs> and you feel and think the same yes. thoughts and yes. it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it's just a- nice to see those little like moments sometimes because, you know, we live our individual expression mm-hmm. in our lives, and then when we have these moments like that that come up mm-hmm. on a fairly regular basis, yes. it's just a good reminder. I mean, it happens sometimes with other people, but not to the same degree. Yeah, and I think we did it again like two days later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's a totally. nice, it's a nice validation of like those niggles and. Connection. Yeah, connection. Yeah, exactly. It is. It's really cool. So we were looking at and exploring what it's like right now during a split, during when you feel comfortable and familiar with things. Yeah, with your life, with your engagements, and kind of like the life before, quote unquote, mm-hmm. the split happened, or more accurately when the... Uh, Situ- global situation happened around right. the coronavirus, let's yeah. say. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I, I kind of liken it to, the, like, teeing it up for conversation. Is Like, when we were kids, um, fast food was, like, a regular. It was a norm, right? Nobody was talking about organic, at least that I knew. It was just not in our household. No. Everything was fat-free, um, margarine, like, no real butter, like... Um, just all of the things, lots of sugar added, manufactured product, and then fast food, Mm -hmm. right? And so to me, like for my physical body and my taste buds, it's Mm -hmm. like uh, McDonald's, let's say, for example, is comfortable and familiar, Mm -hmm. right? Well, maybe not so much comfortable anymore, but there's a degree of that. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Because it's like having it as a kid and, oh, hey, you get a Happy Meal, you Mm -hmm. get a toy and everything too. Get a little present inside. Thanks, mom. So cool. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. So so it was like as a kid that was always great. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a nice thing, and then you get to go play on the playground. So you associate all of these really positive things with that experience. But now, after, I mean, I don't even remember the last time I had fast food, and especially I, who knows about McDonald's? I was like, <laughs> it's not decade even, ago, it like doesn't exist right. in my world. But like. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. like now there is, I guess, less comfort and familiarity with it. But to a degree, I have comfort and familiarity with it. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Like, it's not in my day-to-day, but I'm familiar with it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, and it's an interesting it's an interesting thing to become aware of in your life and good to explore. Like, 
what are you comfortable with and familiar with? Because it might not necessarily be a good thing. Good, right. good being as in supportive to your empowerment or healthy functioning of life on earth yeah. or even just co-creating connection or whatever, right? Supportive of your body. But it's like we kind of get used to and familiar with some of these old practices from our, you know, pre-split lives mm-hmm. or even just coming, moving out of the dark light paradigm because right. it wasn't until 2011 that things changed yeah which really isn't that long ago it's, it's not just over 10 years well and i remember being a kid and watching like very violent films me too and there was like no censoring on television yeah <laughs> you know yeah or seeing like even just like what we would like as an adult now i would consider gosh that was like pretty pornographic that mm-hmm. movie but it wasn't like released as pornography like, yeah to see it as a kid and you don't fully understand right right but it's still you become familiar mm-hmm. with that or those energies mm-hmm. or um violence and degrading um scenarios right yep. And then when you start to step away, they, they start, and you become aware of that, right? Like mm-hmm. You're not desensitized to it to the same degree. They become less comfortable, for sure, 100%. Seriously. And less familiar, but um, there's subtle things, too. Those are kind of bigger examples. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure my favorite movie as a kid was Braveheart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, if you haven't seen the movie is pretty much all about war, death, and destruction. I loved Braveheart. I know! <laughs> <laughs> I think I watched that movie, like, so many times. This is the worst. It's the worst! On so, so many good. levels. Oh, no. But yeah. it was so good at the time. Yeah. I always felt like somehow, like, that, that like, Celtic root, right. like, genetic, there's something to that lineage yeah. that, like, like physically, yeah. like felt very like satisfying to connect to. Same, and probably some past life connections. No, definitely some past life connections. Yeah. But then, like, of course, it's all about the martyr mm-hmm. and victim aggressor and power others. And yet, favorite movie as a kid. Yeah. <laughs> Not great. Yes. But very normal. Right. In the pre twenty eleven paradigm on Earth. Mm-hmm. But now I I can't do it. No. I can't do it. Yeah. And I think that's part of it, right? It's like choosing not to indulge. Yeah. Choosing not to put your attention and your energy there. And it's um, it's interesting because for me, like one of the ways I'll recharge when I'm feeling like I've had too much social time or too much work and too much producing or just basically energy going out, right? Mm-hmm. Like to recharge... I like to, like, watch a movie or watch a television show or something. And I'm finding it's, like, more and more difficult Mm -hmm. to do that. Yep. Because it becomes more and more uncomfortable. Or you see, like, the the programming coming through. Or even just, what is my attention and awareness and energy focused on with this this show or this movie? What am I creating through that? Mm -hmm. Like, what am I agreeing to and fueling? Yeah, totally. Same. For me, uh... I I feel like I'm very comfortable Mm -hmm. being a lone wolf. It's very familiar. (laughs) It's just a normal thing to just kind of retreat away and do your thing. And one of my ways of recharging, too, was to play video games. I love gaming. I love it. It's a fabulous way to explore new worlds and be creative and kind of express some victim aggressor power over other stuff. (laughs) But anyway, so one of um, my tendencies used to be to recharge. I would play a video game, usually some kind of fantasy role playing game or, you know, whatever. And it's usually all about power over other stuff uh, because that's just kind of what I go for. What can I say? Mm -hmm. And gosh, the familiarity is there. Like, I grew up playing games. You have the strategy. The strategy. You know exactly what to do in those situations. I literally <laughs> have, like, muscle memory with my fingers on controllers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just so fun, mm-hmm. right? But I've noticed, especially over the last six months, I haven't really done much of it at all. Mm-hmm. And I got very curious about it because on the one hand, I was like, hmm, am I not taking care of myself, taking care in the sense of that's how I would recharge, especially if I need some me time. That's usually was my go-to. And 
I haven't really done much at all. I was like, huh, why is that? And then I think maybe two or three months ago, I picked up a game, one that I've already played. And it was familiar. It was easy, comfortable, right? But it didn't quite have that same satisfaction. Mm -hmm. And I realized that, especially recently where right now we have very full lives. <laughs> we have so many projects happening in our community, in Ivan's Academy, Walk With Me Now, and just life, right? That there's always something to do every day, every mm-hmm. day on top of our like work and family life and whatever. It's like, oh, go to the shaman shack and do this. And nope, we're going to go to Fossil Beach and do that. Oh, and tomorrow we're going to do this and this and this. It's very full. And as a lone wolf who is primarily introverted her entire life (laughs) this is extremely uncomfortable Mm -hmm. but it's extremely high frequency too so there's this interesting dynamic where i look at the the real results like how do i feel after spending three hours alone in my couch playing a video game when it's like gorgeous outside and sunny and How do I literally feel? How does my body feel? How does my emotional body feel? All of that. And then conversely, how do I feel after impromptu going to the shaman shack to have a painting party and play in the labyrinth or whatever? Right. Totally different. Yeah. It's like connective and inspiring and creative and I feel energized and happy and it's like, whoa, there's this program of I enjoy this thing or I'm comfortable and familiar with recharging in a certain way. But in reality, that's not as true anymore. It's not the only way. Yeah. 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 That's a, that's so fascinating. I'm finding a similar kind of realization. Like, even if I were, like, I many times recently chosen to, like, log into Second Life, right? So for those of you who don't know, Second Life is a... Kara, can you explain it? <laughs> yes. It is a virtual world. It is not a video game. It is a virtual world. And it's literally a second life where you have an avatar and you create your avatar in any way that you want. Mm -hmm. Um, Looks, uh, where you live, where you explore. And it's with other real people. There's no Mm non-player characters. It's just real people. Yeah. So it's literally another world. Yeah. And it's, I love it because the creation part, it's like if I'm getting an, uh, an itch to let's say, remodel my house or repaint or I want to get a new wardrobe or something. It's like, I can go into Second Life. I can do all of those things for, like, pennies Mm -hmm. on the dollar, even less, you know, and just try it out and see what I like. And then, like, I find when I do that, then it all starts to happen in real life. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Totally. Or I have a greater vision and more energy behind it. Or it's just, it's like a scratch that needed to be itched and then Mm -hmm. move on, you know. So I've also found, like, I've chosen to go into Second Life instead and put my attention and energy there. And that actually has also even been, like, a a way of recharging that I didn't know mm-hmm. that I could do. Like, I didn't know it worked that way, right? Because I was always just used to um, that passive, just turn on the television. Mm-hmm. You know, Saturday morning, Sunday morning in my household as kids, it's yep. like <laughs> we were watching TV for hours, Same. for hours. Yeah. And even after school, it's like... You know, the after school television. Yep. You, you have your programs. That's what the best show is. programming that <laughs> yes. we're getting. Yay. Yes. It's like, Program yeah. Program the kids. Yeah. Exactly. And so, uh, yeah, choosing other things has been like a really nice, um, interesting experience to see the other the other choices mm-hmm. or the other options that we have available. Mm-hmm. But the, the funny fact of kind of what we were talking about earlier before we started recording is around because of the light dark experience we're coming from because of having you know the example that programming that we've chosen to keep um from whatever the past lives childhood family friends who knows right Mm -hmm. media because we have some of those that are low frequency sometimes even the high frequency choice will feel dissonant exactly or uncomfortable right or unfamiliar completely yeah. and you feel like you're like oh my gosh <laughs> what is this what is this? <laughs> this is new territory so before we go too much into that i think we could take a, just a moment to talk about we talk about it a lot what's high frequency let's low frequency right mm-hmm. yeah 
So in my perspective, something that's low frequency, right? It's a band of frequency that we're talking about. So there's it's a spectrum. Mm -hmm. So low frequency side, the lowest frequency we can experience as a human and our uh, emotions is fear, mm -hmm. right? On the high frequency side, as you start to move up the scale with it or along the scale, however you visualize it, the high frequency side would be love, joy, mm -hmm. light, inspiration, inspiration yeah. creativity. Mm -hmm. And so like when we find ourselves in something that is on uh, closer to that fear, anger, resentment, um, other low frequency experience or emotions, then we know, right? Like that's a key. That's yep. like a hmm, signal yep. notice what's going on, right? Yep. But what, what do we do when the situation is actually high frequency, but our comfort and familiarity is of the opposite experience? Right. Like, <laughs> exactly. And so there's a dissonance. It doesn't feel right. Maybe we, we have a fear come up. Maybe we have apprehension or discomfort. Or maybe it's just like, I just don't even know what to do with this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or I'm just not even going to look. I'm going to turn around and walk the other way. <laughs> yes, exactly. And it's important to remember that truly, at the end of the day, there's no judgment between the two. It's like a piano scale. Like yeah. C minor is not evil compared to A major. It's just a different tune, right? right. And that's honestly a really important thing to keep in mind with the the co-creations on this planet because we'll see the whole scale yeah and it's important for us as individuals and as groups to look at what do we want to resonate with right and that's a conscious choice and when you make it from a conscious place then you're empowered mm -hmm. you're not being shuffled around or moved by other forces so that's really our goal is to help you become aware of those things so you can have a conscious informed choice even if you want to go to C minor or A major whatever your choice but for us but you have a choice and then also we have awesome tools and resources that will help you exactly to make those choices. yes because shoot i knew i had a choice and i was trying to make those choices but i was like i keep chasing my tail <laughs> right? why do i keep ending up in the same exact position right every time the situation is the same, the people, the characters or the roles being played out, right, are different. The environment's different, but I'm in the same situation. Yeah. And it wasn't until I started I, Ascension 101, completing that course by Anneli Benz at AnneliBenz.com, fear processing exercise, firewalls exercise. Once I started really using those, like truly actually using it, not just like once a year mm -hmm. or, you know. <laughs> like every day. <laughs> yeah. And it just became kind of natural. It's like then the choices, right, to choosing to like go to another frequency was so much easier. Mm -hmm. It started to happen, right, and more quickly. And sometimes, at least from my personal experience, there can be situations where, you know, I'll keep processing this same thing that keeps coming up and it gets easier maybe it comes in different flavors but it's like the same root program mm -hmm. that keeps repeating throughout my life i'll give an example of like i frequently unfortunately give my power away and in more practical terms it's like um i will do things to prevent people from getting angry and it couldn't it might not even necessarily be like angry at me although that's usually like my kryptonite. And so I'll literally change my behavior or won't say something out of fear that it will make someone upset. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple things there, at least I've identified. There's the fear program. There's working on my ego. There's, you know, the emotional body side of things. And there are all of these tools that help address that. Mm -hmm. But there's also been times where... I haven't even seen it that I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. And this is where good counsel comes in. Sometimes it really helps to talk through a situation with other high frequency awake people so you can get that expanded awareness, that yeah. multiple perspectives. Because after sharing like a, a story with uh, some of my friends who are part of these high frequency co-creations, 
They're like, oh, Kara, did you consider X, Y, Z? Or have you looked at maybe how, you know, you're letting external forces control you and all these things? And I was like, I didn't even see that, (laughs) you know? So the tools is definitely a really important part, but so is having good allies and good counsel. Yeah. In other words, healthy groups that you trust and trust you and that are part of that same frequency band. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. And, and choosing that same frequency band, I think, is really, it's, um, it makes things more interesting. It makes things more fascinating. It's co-creative. Like, there's just so much more potential in my experience mm-hmm. when, when you're um, engaged with people who are choosing that instead of something else. And it makes things easier, too. Yeah. <clears throat> if we're not doing it alone... It's literally just easier to do something. <laughs> oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's like, why do we spend time looking at, oftentimes when we have this podcast, we talk about groups and healthy group dynamics. And if you checked out some of our workshops at iBuns Academy, there's a big focus on group and community collaboration. And it's like, well, why? Mm-hmm. Well, part of it is that as a species on this planet we're not really that familiar or comfortable working in groups Mm -hmm. because the group has been hijacked, unfortunately. In a healthy way. Yes, in a healthy way. In a healthy way. High frequency, healthy groups. Yeah. Because there's a lot of programs that have been put in place to disempower us from working together because we're super powerful Mm -hmm. when we work together. Mm -hmm. But let's admit it, we're not very comfortable or familiar (laughs) doing that. (laughs) Yeah. So part of it is like practice other times it's recognizing that you might feel a dissonance working in a group, not because it's bad or the yeah. group itself is negative. It's just you're not comfortable doing it. Right. And that's okay. Right. And that's why practice makes perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, recently, um, Anelia was talking about on driving to one of the Driving to Reds episodes. We can link it. I just don't know which one but <laughs> off the top of my head. But um, she was talking about how the community up here in Olympic Peninsula, we have discovered another group, right? Another group of really awesome, interesting people. And it's very new to us, the bears. Shout yeah. out to bears if you're listening. Bear Terrier. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And so, you know, this all came through um, a podcast and, and something we're all exploring, right? By Owen Benjamin. We're exploring it and it's new to us. But so far, it's like, oh, wow, that's really cool. Oh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Like... These guys are, like, saying a lot of the same things, maybe in a different way. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a lot of creations and focus on that high-frequency expression, like what we just talked about, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. And so it was interesting um, with that because, and this is what Anelia touched on around it, was, like, we could easily step into and experience this group and connect with this group that we had no idea existed until weeks before, you know? And all of a sudden it's like, there's no, there was no hesitation because we knew that no matter what, and this felt super resonant in my experience and how it was for me, it was like, no matter what, like if this becomes um, dissonant, right? Or if there's something, maybe an aspect of it that, is not aligned to what I'm co-creating in my experience right now, it's like, then I'll choose a different way. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't have, it's that giving power away, right? right? And I think that creates the resistance sometimes for people is like, well, I don't want to join or I don't want to try or I don't want to listen because, you know, what if they make me do something? You know, it's like, right. well, no one can make you do anything. Like, you have to agree to it, right? Right, yeah. right. But there's, you know, extent, again, like there's the, the frequency band, there's red flags that can come up, mm-hmm. of course. Like, we talk a lot about street smarts and be aware of those things. But it's like once you are aware of those things and you also have allies that you can share stories, share experiences, and look at and um, let's say have a expanded awareness around, then it's like you just know that why not try? Mm-hmm. You know, why not? Because there's, if th- something is dissonant, then we're out, Yeah. you know, or I'm out, or maybe others just stay, whatever. It's yeah. like, it's, that's, it's that simple, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, and this is why it's really good practice to get familiar with 
what does dissonance feel like in your body? Yes. And what does resonance feel like in your body? And there's a class at AneliaBenz.com that goes into this in great detail. It's called Truth and Lies. And honestly, like, this is one of the most powerful tools you can have for the rest of your life. It's just figuring out in you, in yourself, in your body, what does yes feel like? What does no feel like? What does dissonance feel like? What does resonance feel like? Because that becomes your compass. Yes. And then with the compass, which is always in you, your power, your authority, then you can navigate through life in Mm -hmm. all ways. And then that way, if you're sticking true to your compass, then you can see how to respond. Yep. Whether it's you're comfortable with a low frequency program and it resonates, or there's a high frequency program that's dissonant because it might not be familiar with you, you can at least look at it with an expanded awareness and choose to respond. Yeah, I love that analogy with the compass. And it's like having eyes wide open, Mm -hmm. right? You've got your compass and that will help you navigate, but also be aware you know, is there a magnet or something (laughs) right next to it? That's like, I don't know. I think magnets affect compasses, but you know, like, is there something there that's affecting it? Like keep your compass clean. Yeah. Is your entourage clean? Like, you know, there's so many things that could be open doors to having an impression that something is uncomfortable or dissonant Mm -hmm. um, and unfamiliar. Right. So that's where it's really takes that diligence and doing your work. So Yes, become familiar with resonance and dissonance and keep, it's like kind of like maintain a tidy house for your personal experience. Right. You know, keep it clean. Yeah. Keep your entourage clean. Um, not engaging in low frequency things. Like, for example, drugs and alcohol, there's mm. influences there. Yeah. Like you're open door right away yeah. to uh, low frequency experiences or engagements absolutely and it's called spirits for a reason (laughs) yes it's true and also think about what's your north what's your magnetic north yeah there you go because your magnetic north could be power of others or unconscious victim aggressor programs or whatever right but with practice and by using the tools and being diligent you know sometimes we might oopsies it's fine you know, dust off, keep going. But with more awareness, as well as with good allies and good counsel, we can really see, oh, is that actually really due north, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Mm -hmm. Or is there a magnet, like you said? I love that analogy. And sometimes it can change. But at least you're doing it consciously. Yeah, and I find, like, it's just a simple attitude of being curious um, makes such a huge difference. If I'm curious about... Okay, in this situation right now, I want to run. Like, I just want to walk away and, you know. Bye-bye. That's interesting. (laughs) Yeah, right. Why? Mm -hmm. Oh, because this is a moment or opportunity of deeper connection, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Or stepping out of the lone wolf Mm -hmm. or being vulnerable or something that actually may feel, in my experience, like uncomfortable up front, but it's actually like creates even more opportunity for actually a higher frequency experience mm-hmm. so my my comfort zone would be to walk away <laughs> but the high frequency choice and response and conscious response rather than reaction would be to stay right and to engage mm-hmm. and continue in the conversation or whatever the situation is yeah so and, and sometimes it might just be as simple as if you haven't tried something for the first time it's just unfamiliar because it's yeah. uncharted territory and there are different ways to learn something new. Some people just jump right in and they're like, yeah, and, you know, make mistakes and don't care. They're just super excited. Others might be more hesitant and be like, oh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing or oh, how do I do this? It's, it's a little scary because you've never done it before. Mm-hmm. And those are both programs, yeah. right? Yeah. Different approaches to the same situation. So even just doing something new, stepping out of your comfort zone or being in an unfamiliar situation, that in and of itself can bring up a lot of programs <laughs> that might be good to look at and see, right. get curious at, about, exactly. about them. Yeah. It's like, why? Why? Is my, okay. Am I safe right now? Like physically, yes. am I safe? Are you yes. going to die? No. No. Okay. okay. Physically, we're safe. That's good. Yes. That's a really great thing. Because if one. you aren't safe, then yes, like get go and you know, call nine one one. Yes. But, walk away. Yeah. <laughs> or one one nine. Yeah. 
<laughs> yes. So, but then like, it's like kind of looking at it in that perspective. Okay. So what is it here that is dissonant? Mm-hmm. You know, what's going on? Yep. And then that's what you can further explore. And we're not talking psychoanalysis. We're not going to sit on a couch and like... <gasps> Tell us about your motherhood traumas. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it's irrelevant, yeah, actually. It's totally irrelevant. Yeah. We're just talking about, like, energetically what's operating, right? Yeah, and what's coming up in you? Like, are you responding out of ego? Like, oh, I don't want to do that because they won't like me. Or, or, oh, I have a fear because... I'm, you know, literally in danger. Like, that might be different. Yep. But I'd say nine times out of the ten, it's usually an unhealthy ego. <laughs> yeah. And, like, the, again, we'll go back to fear processing exercise. Mm-hmm. In the moment, do the fear processing exercise, right? Yeah. And you can do it standing while you're even looking at people. It can be done. Yeah. We've done it. Yeah. <laughs> but you can also <laughs> replace the word fear with another yeah. emotion. Yeah. Maybe anger or anxiety or worry you know you can you can replace that and then right away and you know try it test it out uh in my experience right away things start to settle Mm -hmm. and that like heightened awareness or reaction response simmers down and it gives you time Mm -hmm. you know you get that chance right as anelio say like count to 10 it's a really (laughs) common one guys you know count to 10 and then give you a chance to have yourself a chance to have a decision made, a conscious decision, not a reaction. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So lots to look at. Totally. So much to look at. We just like, we put out a lot right now. (laughs) (laughs) And there's so much more that we could talk about, but. It's exciting. As for now, you know, get curious. Look at where are you comfortable in your life in a way that may not necessarily be high frequency. And also where is it high Mm -hmm. frequency? Where are aspects of your life where you're very familiar? It's just easy because it's just part of the routine. Is it low frequency? Is it high frequency? Just look at it and you might discover some really interesting things about your day-to-day life just by doing that. And does it align with your due north, right? Like if if your mission, your purpose, your vision, your inspiration for life, like if it doesn't align with that, then there's obviously a disconnect. There's something going on there Mm -hmm. and then... Even more to look at. Yep. Yep. So um, that is, uh, I, I'd say, segue to Cash is doing mentoring. Woo! Yay! <laughs> so if you would like to do mentoring with Cash, there's a few requirements to be able to do that. And what we're talking about is IBEN's method mentoring. So IBEN's method mentoring is, of course, focused on mentoring through empowerment. So learning through our experiences that are relevant to potentially what it is you're trying to create or want to experience in your life. And then as we do the mentoring, this is also an opportunity, guys, listen, this is an opportunity Mm -hmm. (laughs) to be able to do future trainings, Mm -hmm. right? This makes you eligible for that. And what do you mean by trainings? Tell us more. Hey. <laughs> well, I mean, there's there's a couple different paths, but there could be mystical training or there could be mentoring training. So to become an IBEN's method uh, mentor mm-hmm. uh, and practitioner of that. So it's something that through IBEN's Academy, we are going to be offering. It's in the works, but we're it's down the road in the future. But doing the IBEN's method mentoring is a pre-qualifier for these things, for either mystical training or with IBEN's Academy and IBEN's Method Mentoring Training to become a mentor. Yep, exactly. It's an amazing opportunity and it doesn't come up often. So take the time, look at the opportunity as a way to really fast track your high frequency experience and, you know, it could expand into so much more if that's something that's of interest to you. Yeah. So, and another thing is at the end of the day, this work, all this empowerment work that you're doing really isn't about you (laughs) it's actually about us because the more you raise your frequency the more you process your fears the more you really step in and embody your high frequency source power your empowerment that actually makes all of us more effective and able and empowered Mm -hmm. it literally affects the entire collective so at the end of the day, whether you are a mentee, mentory, <laughs> mentee mm-hmm. or you are a mentor in the IBEN's practitioner format, 
or you're doing your fear processing, or even in that split second where you choose to respond instead of react out of ego or anger or whatever, you are literally helping to bring in the new paradigm. Yeah. So to your work, be diligent. You're not alone. And connect. Yeah. We're available. We hang out on Walk With Me Now. Yep. And there's a lot of really awesome things going on there. Again, that's part of the prerequisite to be able to be considered. Yep. Uh, And then the application details are on Walk With Me Now for Iben's method, mentoring with cash. But that, I think, would be, that's just a great starting point. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, in addition to the other work we talked about, fear processing and that. But uh, as far as starting to connect and building your allies... That's a fantastic place to go. Oh, yeah. And also you can build allies with us on our Telegram channel and also by subscribing to our newsletter because we, we offer information and ways to connect through our newsletter that you won't see anywhere else as well. Yeah. So connect, empower yourself. Bring a pen and paper next time you listen to our <laughs> podcast because we're going to throw out a lot of info. <laughs> you can always hit rewind too. Yeah, there you go. I like it. <laughs> You're so smart. I know, it's true. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Cool. Well, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye.